Okay. Thumbs live. Right. We're now we're live. You can hear us. Okay, <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Wish you were here because look at these really cute rose gold chopsticks that Lisa gave away. Um, welcome to today's class. It's super important. Just to give us more strategies for lead generation. Thank you guys for showing up in person, by the way. Um, to all the two people, I'm just kidding. Two people. <laughs> so all the six people in the crowd, seriously, thanks for showing up for yourself and your businesses. Um, who doesn't want more lead generation tactics? So who doesn't want? Do you guys need more leads? Raise your hand. If you don't, give it to me. Right? Just kidding. Exactly. You know, so I'm super excited. I know a lot of you guys, like I said, have life that happens and you have kids at home or a uh, dual career agent currently. So thank you for tuning in and please watch this back. And Lisa is phenomenal. I highly recommend you guys take advantage of her pre listing packages that she makes for us. Like, they're really, really good. Really good. Like, right now, you got, I saw the one you got too. Yeah, super clean. Uh, super clean. Like, take advantage of what you guys have. These pre listing packages are phenomenal. It's a better quote than you could ever get with the CMA, I swear. So take advantage of the resources we have. I know today's not about that, but we're yeah. gonna do a quick plug. Yeah, well, right? I appreciate that. Thank you. Right, thank you, take okay. it away. So for those of you that don't know me, I'm Lisa Favorite, the lawyer's title, and um, I'm celebrating 25 years in the business right now. So it's pretty amazing. Thank you. That's older than me. Ah, yeah. I know. That because the other day I was at an office and I said I was going to a concert in December and the age and the agent asked me and she's younger she said oh which concert and I said Depeche Mode and she goes who are they oh, wow <laughs> now I know everybody <laughs> 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 well, doesn't everybody know Depeche Mode right I know a lot of people don't so anyway I'm aging myself out there but anyway um, we put this presentation together and um, the, the, the it still stands true to this day so I kind of want to go through this power Point. You might catch me looking down because I know it's up there, but I'm going to be reading it off my iPad and kind of go along with it. But we put this together. So um, I know that when Nicole sent the uh, Facebook post out, she kind of said, you know, really diving into your farm. But right now it's all about reasons to reach out. So some of you I know are newer in the business and might not have past clients yet. So you just have friends um, and family that's in your, your sphere. But this is going to dive through a little bit of uh, different ways to go through the funnel of where your leads are coming from. And then we're going to talk about what to send to those leads and then um, dive into some data towards the end of it. So I'm just going to kind of breeze through it. Um, so it basically is where are your leads coming from? Your leads are most likely coming from one of the seven, right? We can all agree. It's either family, friends, referrals, repeat clientele, open houses, social media, expired listings, targeted mailers. I know we've got Sync in there, Trulia, you just everything that you guys are already taught and told what to do in this business, right? That's where we're, we're lead generating. There's probably a lot more that we can put on there, but those are pretty much the funnel, right? And then we go through this and we look at it and we go, okay, well, 85% plus is probably of your business coming from your family and your friends and your repeat clientele. And we can all agree open houses, social media is about 10%, and then targeted mailers are kind of about five. And most of my agents that are utilizing mailers and any type of um, mailings, whether it's letters or postcards or what have you, will say that they really just do that because they want to make sure that they keep that brand out there in front of their farm, right? And or their sphere. So not everybody right now agrees on on doing mailers. I have some teams that are pulling back during the holidays, but I have others that say they don't stop. They continue to go. They have to. It's part of their brand, and they're going to continue to do the mailers. But this is general idea where it all comes from. And then when we look at how much we're spending on our dollars, right? We look at okay, but it's flipped because we're probably only spending about five percent on family, friends, referral and doing a majority with 85% of targeted mailers. So we say here, spend more time and money on your past clients, friend, uh, family and friends, and the ideas to build referrals, okay? And we want to be consistent and creative in doing that, and we want to do that, find ways to stand out and be first, be top of mind, right? We want to make sure that everybody that knows you knows that this is the business that you're in and this is what you do. And don't let your clients forget who you are. And I often, you guys, I will get messages, and not putting anybody on the spot here, but I'll get messages from realtors, and it just says from my from my Outlook phone, or from my iPhone, or from my, you know, and it doesn't say the website, it doesn't have the brand, you know, nothing, no website, uh, email, you know, make sure you have all of your information on there, because oftentimes when you get that leader, that, that meet that person, you know, whether it's at the grocery store at a family event or what have you, and you're talking and you're exchanging numbers and you want to text them, you should have your contact information in that text automatically come up. So um, anyway, make sure it's, your, your info is easy to find when needed. And sometimes when I'm re 
researching my agents and I'll go to look for them, whether it's on Google or it's like I have to really go look for them. I'll go on Instagram, I'll go on Facebook, I'm like, well, what's their phone number? Where, you know what I mean? So just make sure all your information's on there. Um, and master the art of creating excuses to call your clients, and I can't say that enough. And I just call it like reasons to reach out. You always want to create a reason to reach out. So some of this might be after a closing, and I want to kind of give you some ideas. And I know the marketing pieces on here, you might look at it and go, okay, they're silly, they're outdated. We, we understand that, and I know that. But you've got to remember that there are so many marketing um, ideas that you can get from like Breakthrough Broker, from your Michael Lewis marketing suite, or just really anything right now. If you go on the internet and you're looking for something similar, you can create it. So reasons to reach out after you close, hand, hand deliver a laminated list of your neighbors' names, emergency numbers, utility numbers, contractors, painters, local restaurants, things like that. And you guys probably have other ideas that you can utilize, but that's always really cool just to have that, hey, a few days later, I just want to make sure you got everything you need. And you might already include that in when you are closing, but it's nice to have something like that. And then we always talk about this $7,000 homeowner exemption. And I think last time I was in here, most of you um, that were at my last class, we talked about that. And not only can you do this with your past clients, but you can do it with a farm area as well. Our dynamic farm literally gives you a farm area and tells you if they ha are taking advantage of the homeowner's exemption or not. How easy is that? And if it's not, then basically you can let them know. Now, an updated uh, flyer we have created at Lawyer's Title, and I can get that over to you, that explains what it is. It's a $70 savings. So they, you're meaning your people in your farm that haven't taken advantage of it, or your clients that maybe you've um, put in a property or in your sphere, if they haven't taken advantage of it, you get to say, hey, I just wanted to let you know it's a reason to reach out. I notice you're not taking advantage of the $7,000 homeowner exemption. It saves you about $70 a year. Here's some info on it. Here's the link to Riverside County. Make sure you file a claim, and then you look like the superhero. Okay, so it's, again, it's I'm creating reasons for you to stay in front of your clients in your farm. And then some people like to do this. I'll send the close the CD at the taxes for the end of the year that's coming up. So just to remind them, that's always good to let them know what what their um, their closing disclosure is, you know, and then they can utilize it for their taxes. Some of you guys might already be doing that. Okay, if not, it's a really good reason. And you can always get that from uh, Amy and escrow or any escrow officer. Woo, Amy! Woo -hoo, right? And then, you know, I put this on here because this is interesting too, the after your close, but you really can be doing this at any time. Having a barbecue for their friends and family. Okay, have any of you done this? We just thought it was good or just been. Okay. <laughs> here's what it. Here's what's really cool about this. So I have a client, or I have a realtor that does this already. So every time they close up, uh, she says, "Can I get a list of your family and friends that you would like to buy? I'd like to have like a housewarming for you, do like a barbecue or a cocktail hour." Then she gets all that, and that's data for her database of you know to, who to contact. So, and then she's there with them at the party. So it's a really cool reason. You don't even have to do this just because they close a property, but it is a good idea to do after it closes. And then I'm having my agents do this right now, and I have realtors that have been sticking with it. Um, I call this the annual checkup. Have any of you heard me talk about the annual checkup letter or anything like that? Mm -hmm. I call them equity estimates as well. So you can do this with your past clients, you can do this with a, a farm, whatever you want to do, but basically it goes something like, hey, you have equity in your home. You don't have to give them an exact dollar amount. Unless it's somebody that you already worked with in the past and you really want to dive in a little bit deeper and let them know how much equity, maybe they bought from you a couple years ago, three years during the pandemic, you know they've made equity, you can say, hey, this is how much equity you have. Just want to give you an annual checkup to let you know what your equity is. Oh, by the way, who else do you know that's thinking about buying, selling, and investing? It's, again, it helps the kids, and it's a reason to reach out. So you can do this with a farm area, you can do this with your sphere, or you can do it after you close with a client, maybe a year later, whatever is the best uh, for you. And then I love this too, is just kind of use a cup of coffee letters to show the savings. So, you know, any type of letter, that, like this one, it says if you apply $140 towards the principal, you're basically letting the clients know, hey, if you put a little bit extra money into your payment every month, you're going to be saving this. And it's just a really cool idea because then they get to see that you're actually care, they're in the property, and you're telling them, hey, you know what, if you make, make one extra payment a year, you're saving this much money. So again, a reason to reach out and create that dialogue. 
Um, I was at the Holden Earthquake Preparedness event. I had I went over the weekend. I don't know if, if any of you saw on my social media. My one client did a huge event in Haripa Valley. Excuse me, it's water. She had a um, became friends with a face painter that had come to other events in the area for her that she would hold. And this face painter says to her, "Hey, I have this property in Haripa Valley, and it's kind of like the old." Um, has like the Knott's Berry Farm style, you know, houses in the back, and oh, it's got, cool. um, you know, the little wagons and, and uh, little petting zoos, and there was goats, and there was horses, and all this good stuff, right? And she says, you know, you're more than welcome to use it. Obviously, she wanted her to do the face painting and want a small fee for the rental of the space, but nothing like it would cost to have it somewhere else. They brought in pumpkins. They had teeter-totters there, petting zoo. She had 150 plus people that came from 4 to 8 o'clock. It was a hit. I don't know, you gotta go on my social media. I, can, I was like very impressed. But anyway, I just say, anything that you can do with your past clients, mm -hmm. within your sphere, even like this earthquake preparedness or coloring contest like for Easter, pumpkin patches, things like that, that creates a little bit more. Because I always get that, well, I don't know what to do in my farm. Well, I don't know exactly what to write it too. Yeah, you know, Halloween's coming up, guys. you know. We have a, a we have a team that works out in the desert. They do scholarship giveaways. You know, everybody's different with what they do, but just think of different reasons outside the box to make yourself stand out from the other builders in the area. You know, set aside like we put on here, 100 per transaction every 10 deals. You have a thousand dollars to give away, or or 500 after a closing. That is huge. Imagine posting that that you you just did this and you're helping somebody get a scholarship or go to school. I mean, that's going to go huge in your farm. Educational classes. I have an agent doing one this weekend, and they're using the community event center in Eastvale, and they're having a trust class. Um, what you know, what the importance of investing or investing their properties into a trust, and why it's so important. And they're partnering up with a trust attorney. And what I like about this is. You know, basically prote protecting your legacy, and they were concerned about their turnout. They weren't sure if they were going to get a huge turnout, and they weren't quite, you know, they're inviting all their past clients, and they're inviting people in their database and their sphere, but they were really worried. So I said, why don't we do this? Why don't we pull everybody that's in Eastville that's owned their home 15 years or longer that hasn't had their property vested in a trust? And they're like, okay. And then we narrowed it down and we got all the emails and phone numbers for that. And they created their email campaign and a text campaign to invite them to that event this Saturday. And that really did bring up the uh, people that are going to be attending, the attendance. So they were really happy about doing that. Though there's other ways to get the people to your events, but definitely think about that. Um, how many of you guys do video testimonials when you close a property? huge you guys video is everything so think about that man you just close that property how impactful Ooh, for them to talk man. about their service yes. that they have with you hey i love working with manny he made the process simple and easy recommend you know what i mean just a little small hey would you be not i know not all buyers and sellers are willing to go on video but it doesn't hurt to ask that's right. It doesn't hurt to ask and the power in that that video is going to bring your algorithm up that much more on social media it really is powerful so Definitely think about doing video testimonials. I know some of you already may have that, some of you may not. A lot of my agents do videos, period, and have them on their um, social media that talks about maybe the process, the steps, and buying and selling. Think about all that, because it's so much easier when you're talking to somebody and they have all these questions and you may be able to, hey, you know what, I got a really uh, two minute video on some of the services I provide, or you know, what, 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 how simple the buying process is, or what three things you need to buy a home, you know, that type of thing. So think about all that, it's powerful. So I would say, don't be a secret agent, right? Google yourself, have, it, has it, have any of you Googled yourselves to see where you come up on Google? Yes. Yeah, I do all the time. I'm like, I hope I'm up there, right? I sometimes think, okay, because my last name is different, or here, you know, like, it will come up. And there was another Lisa Fair, I'm like, get rid of her. <laughs> so anyway, I'm coming up now. But you know, it helps. Obviously, the more reviews you get and things like that, and, I had a team that sent me a uh, email the other day asking me to review them. I've worked with them for over 10 years. I have no problem sending you guys a Google review. Anything that I can help doing to do to help you know drive it up, of course I'm gonna say I've worked with you, all the good things that your attributes, like that, that those are the things you need to be asking for. If you wanna be 
when they go into research, especially if it's Instagram, Facebook, on Google, that you come up, that you're out, you know, outshining your competitors. Sorry, I'll just leave that. Um, so make sure you, that people can easily find you, have your cell, cell phone, email, and, and know what company you work for. Have your contact info on your email and all text signatures. I say that, I know I said it in the beginning and I can't stress that enough because when I see it's just from my Outlook iPhone or my Outlook, I'm like, oh boy, put, put your information on there. All right, so was, hopefully that was a little bit helpful. Think, think for the events outside. There's so many events that you could do. I know we talked about, obviously, the pumpkin patch and all that kind of stuff, but there's also, like, I have agents that do shredding events, uh, trust seminars. I'm, the possibilities are endless, so you can really do anything on 1031 Exchange, but partner up with these people. I really highly suggest, too, that if you don't have an attorney in the area, like a local area that you farm, that you really partner up and pair with them because you will want to do that. You want to have somebody that you can go to that you re can refer your clients to, that you can even do classes with and things like that to help your clients, okay? Targeted leads. Okay, who's your ideal target market? We kind of talked about this because I feel like right now there's so many ways that we can um, go through our farm area and it's kind of like niche farming. Most of you have, have Dynamic Farm, and I know it does it for you. Once you upload your farm, it, it really does the segmented areas. But you can really dive in anywhere, and I want you to know that I'm here to help you. So if if the farming system's a little overwhelming, you're like, gosh, I just want to give her my, a mapped area of a geographic farm, and I want her really to dive deep in there and let me know who is underwater. How many people live there over 15 years? Like I can really do a full-blown analysis of any area. So if that's something that's of importance to you, I can make that happen and take that off your hands, okay? But we have ways to get to equity owners, people that have a lot of equity in their property. We have ways to look at people that may be possible short sales. We wouldn't really be focusing on notice of defaults and short sales right now. There's too many people that have equity out there, okay? If you come across a transaction where somebody is in that situation, of course, you're gonna wanna help them, but Especially if you're newer, I would right now just stick with the, the, the equity sellers. Um, but I often get, hey, I've got, I've got people that want to live in this in this neighborhood, but it has to be a single story. It has to be three bedrooms or small, you know, whatever the criteria may be. Is it a move up, a move down? You know, um, are we looking at people that live out of state, owners that are not vested in a trust? Are we looking for people that are military background? Neg Adam loans, arm resets, FHAs, like there's so many different ways to go through data, right? Equity owners. Now, I put on here Title Pro 247 because it really is a fast way and a real easy way to go into the system. And I could take a whole city, I could take a zip code, I could map out an area and really start getting into the specifics. So, like in this case, you know, this is old, but I could say um, properties that are in Riverside that recorded prior to 2010 that had a full sale, that our owner occupied, and uh, I can see their equity percentage was um, greater than 40%, right? So we have a way to pull that and it will narrow down all those leads for you. And then you can even take those leads and we can run them through a, a system for Retriever and get those emails and phone numbers for you. So there's so many different ways that you guys can you know, really get into that. And then, uh, you know, you bought low, make sure you sell high, or you bought 2004, 2004, sold it today for a big profit. Whatever your content and letter be, some of these, like I said, are a little outdated, but there's so many new marketing pieces that you can create. Just think about letting them know, this is when you bought, this is what you, you could sell for, and this is the equity that's in your property. If you're searching for short sales, are any of you want to target short sales? Not really. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Somebody skip that one. <laughs> but just know there are marketing pieces out there that we already have made. There's some that are in the um, uh, Lawyers Agent 1 as well. There's definitely different marketing pieces that you can find. Empty Nesters seems to be a big, a big one right now. Um, yeah. So if you've got Empty Nesters, I know, again, Dynamic Farm has it along with Title Pro 247. But if you're looking for people that live in their home for a long time, with most likely the children are out of the house that maybe want to be you know, starting to downsize. Think about doing 1031 exchanges, maybe think about buying investment property. You have ways to search that. Um, you know, big house to a small house, are you ready to downsize? Those are the type of marketing pieces that you could utilize with it. 
And um, I know that Sally Successful is on here, right, talking about all the, all the different uh, things that she could be doing from the big house. And so she's saying, like, hey, have dinner on us at Jack's Cafe and Rancho. Come learn about four common mistakes sellers make when they've owned their home for 20 years or more, right? So it talks about avoid unnecessary expenditures, minimize unnecessary liabilities, minimize costs, maximize your profit profitability. And then the QR code, do you guys do all QR codes or any type of call to action on your marketing pieces? I just highly recommend that. Have some way to track it, have some way to drive them back to whether it's your, your website or whatever, but I always say the call to action is really important because you want to, you're gonna invest the time and money to create that marketing piece you're going to want to make sure that you see the results. I don't want you guys to send stuff out and just spray and pray, right? You hope they call you. And you're like, oh, maybe they'll text me. I mean, I do what you guys do. I prospect agents all the time. I never know who's going to be my next top producer. I try to, I try to treat everybody equally because I, I never know, right? But I do what you do. I'll text them. I'll email. I'll hound them until they call me back. But it's like I have to do that too. But you have to think outside the box in different ways. And if you can track what's working, then you can do it again on the next time you decide to send out another mailer. All right. So on this one, we did the move up in size. So I would say it's, it's really easy. You can take a farm area, you can take a whole city, a zip again, and I can say, you know what, I wanna see everybody that lives in a, in a townhouse or a condo that's under a thousand square feet, that's less than two bedrooms. You know, you can really get specific. Those people that have at least 50% equity, right? Maybe those people are ready to move up now because they've been in this home for a while and it's pretty small. And that, you know, and you can even get pretty um, uh, in the system that you can say with presence of children. So if they're living in a two bedroom with less than a thousand square feet, yeah. maybe it's time and they've got at least 50% equity and they've got children, maybe they're thinking about moving up, okay? So there's definitely ways, and you know, have you outgrown your home? You know, how shrinking is the family growing? You know, <laughs> come up with so many different um, marketing pieces, but again, just another way to, to target within your farm. And then we put in here and just move up in quality, you know, a 50% or more equity. Maybe they've lived in a home that's older, maybe they want a newer home. So we can have pull that data where if they've lived in a home that's older, they have a lot of equity, maybe that they're having to pay for a lot of repairs, but you know, the, the home was built in the 70s, you know, and they're like, yeah, all right, maybe it's time to get, a, get out of this house and get into something that's a little bit newer. So I <laughs> like this one, happy wife, happy life. Um, you've done well with your home, maybe now it's time to upgrade. So different ideas like that that could go in for quality. And then I really like out-of-state owners. I know, again, Dynamic Farm has the capability along with Title Code 247. But if you're not targeting the out-of-state owners within your farm, you're really missing out or, or the absentees. And there's a lot of reasons. I mean, for most of all, they're in, they're in a different state. They don't always often hear the news that they're, they're hearing the news and they're saying not what's going on here in California, right? We're only getting our local news, unless they're completely savvy and they're up to, to speed on all that. But they're looking for you guys to be their eyes and ears here in California. So that's that's the message I would send to them. Let me be your eyes and ears you know, here in California. Um, have you thought about um, buying more investment properties? Have you thought about selling your investment property? Um, have you thought about a 1031 exchange? There's, there's different reasons to reach out. I guarantee if you pulled your farm area and you had 500 homes within your farm, you may have 10 to 15 that are out of state. That's a that's a separate like list letter where you can go. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna hound these people every three weeks. It might be a letter, then a postcard, a phone call, whatever it may be, a text. But I would really stay on top of that. I think uh, it's Lisa, really. And if I'm not mistaken, you know, break it down to like what they own, right? Like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You can narrow it down to like the one that most likely to sell. Yeah, you know, it, it's really easy. If you go to my lawyer's agent one app, I know we did that class in here. I was showing my agent and he goes, you know, this is a no-brainer. You can type in the address. It lets you know the current address, I mean, the current taxes, which is great. Plugs that in, but it also lets you know, um, let's say they did a, a had their loan in 2021. And it will tell you the rate back in 2021 was, the average was this. And you can kind of see, but yes, we can pull a deed of trust. We can see the rate in terms. You would know exactly what probably the balance would be. And you would know how much equity would be in the home. Um, so talk about, you know, you've done well with your California investment property, consider selling before, you know, a downtrend in values. And we're seeing that right now, right? We're seeing that properties. In fact, somebody just did a really good market update for the city of Riverside, and I thought, you know, that was really smart. There's like 100 and, 
think you said there was about 134 homes or something right now on the market in, in Riverside, and 40, uh, was it 40 of them have been on the market for longer than 40 days, and it's basically saying that you're seeing it flatten, right? And you know, just kind of look at it. The reason they're sitting longer than the average, which is 10 to 15 days, mm -hmm. is because that they're overpriced. They need to bring bring it back down. So I, I just bring it things like this. If that's happening and they're out of state, they, they need to know that. They need to know what's going on here. Again, I already talked kind of about the owners that were invested in a trust. I really feel like, has anybody that's been in the business done any type of trust owner? Have you ever done one? No, I'm actually working on one. Are you working on one? I just did that trust myself. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So you understand the importance yeah. of it, yeah. right? I just I mean, put it aside for it. As I think I'm gonna live forever, maybe I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, a lot of people. A, a <laughs> lot of people. You yeah. would be surprised how many. I, and I, even if it's if it's not something you want to do within your farm, challenge yourself to do it with your sphere and your database. I really can't stress that enough because I see it on the title side all the time. Where oh my gosh, so and so is wanting to sell their property, and I have to say to them, they didn't have it in a trust. It's a probate situation. You know, when they don't vest their property correctly. That's all. It, it's such a great thing. And then the, these people that are going to attend are going to look at you guys. I like, thank you so much. You were you brought me value. You brought me something that is going to help my family. And if there was something that was going to happen to me or my husband, then we know that our kids are going to be taken care of. So it's really really so important. Attorneys are attorneys. The attorney. So oh, you, all you have to do is align yourself with a um, good local attorney. There's a few I know in the area as well. I'm sure some of you guys. Ask, is there someone yeah, I really like. Um, Andrea Shoop from Shoop Legal. She's really good. She's out of here in Marietta. Um, Ryan Darling's really good. Um, Darling and Darling out in the uh, Riverside area. Oh, gosh, you got Brian Ashcraft, Ashcraft and Associates out here. And I say that because doing this 25 years, I see different presentations at different offices or at associations that come in. Um, I think you guys have your own attorney too, don't you? He was just here yesterday. Yeah, um, John Mansur. He's awesome too. But does yeah. he do trust? That would be, ask him. Oh, I would ask him, is that something if he, if he would be willing to do a trust class That's for you? That's a good event, like in mm -hmm. a restaurant. Mm -hmm. like so the attorney I did it with uh, agreed actually to be willing to host a class for us. So if you guys want to all get together and maybe set a date, we can yeah. just invite all of our clients yeah. and, and you know, let's just do something for, for that, all as a, we yeah, the house. As an office. And, and the more people come, the more people sign up, the lower you'll do the price. Well, people better put it on our actual calendar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So bring it out today, I'll see you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of value yeah. in that. You'll, and that's something that. For your clients. No, no, yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Not only for you guys, but, you know, and so this talks about learn how to protect us. And you guys. Yeah, no. And I suggest that, by the way, in here. How many of you have your property invested in a trust? Well, now you do. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's really, it's yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got, I've got one right now that is a neighbor across the street from us mm -hmm. that has been going through the pro. It has five siblings. Oh, and it just took one one of the sisters to put up a fight. And they've been going through probate for over a year. Oh. And this property is just sitting there. And it's just, it's it's sad to see, but. Can you stop sharing or? Uh oh. I didn't. I didn't. Oh, there you go. Back. Dang, you're good. Hip and techie. No, I just take a little bit. And I know who Depeche Mode is, right? Okay. So on this one, we put in. Um, has any of you ever gone after for any military or did, yeah, military? You have ways to get that. Oh, it's okay. Military. That's a that's a hot topic right now, right? As far as like VA, what have you? We uh, ways to pull that as well. VA class for me. Oh, good, good. So we have that. You're able to search that as well. So if that's a target for you, and you could go through here little things. You served our country. And it's an honor to serve you. Right. But I mean, there's when, a, says, when you said we can search, is that on the website? We can search. Yeah, it went on my title pro, you're sure. able to pull properties mm -hmm, okay. and base base on that. Sure so yeah, you guys, you guys should look up military bases and target ads around those areas. Oh. That's like the number one way to do it. You can even target different military bases from different states and target ads for Southern California because they really locate over here. So apparently, you know, this is this is nice. So it says, "Hope oh, well, you know, had a great summer." Blah blah blah. Um, you obviously are you know, having a guest speaker. 
best military loan for a refinance program, the best military home loan purchase programs, how to avoid probate, how to protect your family with a legacy trust. Things like that to the veterans, right? This is a great way to, to target. So that'll be good. When is that? When is that coming up? Um, next month we have a date coming in our calendar. Okay, perfect. And then neg am loans, that's kind of a little bit more involved, so, yeah. but you have def you have ways to target them through there. Mm -hmm. Arm resets, there's so many different ones in here. And of course our, our wonderful renters, right? I mean, I know it's hard right now. Everybody's like, gosh, you know, I need more listings. I don't really want more buyers. And we know the buyers are out there and they're just waiting for their rates to drop. So we all understand the cycle that's going on, but there's definitely ways to look at properties. I would, I would just think of it this way. If you do have the ability to hold an open house, and um, with one of the one of our um, you know properties that are inventory right, but they're with in your office. I'm assuming right. If you get that opportunity, when you look at that, you could say, okay, I can look in the area and find out how many people are current renters, right? And we are able to literally pull for you that data, and that might be something where you have a slide broadcast that goes out. I'm just kind of thinking outside the box. You have an open house coming up. Maybe you do a little bit more preparedness and. Uh, a day before you do a slide broadcast to everybody that rents in that area, right? And you let them know that there's going to be a open house from one to four on Saturday to Sunday and you want to personally invite them. That would be a great way to bring buyers into your open house that ho hopefully don't have an agent that they're already working with. Okay, so think outside the box on, on some of those things. It's also a great way to even if you're having a uh, open house to do a slide broadcast and invite all the neighbors maybe personally beforehand to come and have like muffins and mimosa privately and wouldn't you like to pick your neighbor type of thing so so many agents are utilizing it but we have ways to find renters um, obviously you guys all know you can tell them if they're paying this much in rent they can afford a home that is valued at this I see that a lot with um, clients and realtors that are targeting renters because they know that they could be possibly buying out, especially in the, one of my agents took a, a listing in Victorville. She listed it at 359, 1300 square feet, had two offers on it, 10,000 over and sold in one day. So, I mean, it, it will go, it will go. So, the, but what I'm getting at is, I asked her, I said, where, where were the buyers coming from? It was, it was Victor Bell. And she said they lived in Orange. Yeah, from all down here. Yeah. Down yeah. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Where's the yeah, they price were, point? Yeah. They wanted, they wanted the price point. I don't know how people do that drive, though. It's insane. Well, and then, you know, I don't know their family situation either. Yeah. Maybe the guys in the military. I have no idea. I didn't really get all the specifics. But I am curious. I'm like, where are, and are you, you guys kind of tracking that on your open houses? Do you see where your buyers oh, are yeah. coming from? Yeah. 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 So that might be, that might be a way to look at it too, is if you're having an open house out here, mm -hmm. maybe not even target the ones that are in like Elsinore, target sure somebody like, there. you know, yeah. Anaheim Hills or Orange that are renting and just a, a few of them and, and give it a go and see if they'll make the drive. Um, high interest rates and refis, I really don't think this is the time to do that. Um, but turnover areas, which we always talk about, and I, I know you guys know that, but turnover right now, I'm seeing it low in pretty much everybody's farm. So it used to be I'd get up here and preach you guys, you gotta have a turnover area of 6% or higher. It's so important. And you do see it in certain communities, but it's usually because it's condos, townhomes, smaller, you know, in certain areas. But I, I highly recommend just, even if you have it, whether it's your dynamic farm or just track it, keep your eye on it because you will start to see the updates and notifications when things start to kind of turn. So if you're farming more than one area and you have them in your dynamic and it says it's a B or a C and you see it start the letter change because you know there's been more action and turnover. So I just always recommend and anything that you've sent, um, anything that you've sold in the, the last couple of years to, I always look at that. See, see where those properties were located and maybe that's where you need to be farming if you're farming somewhere else and you're not seeing the results. Maybe you need to be where you've been selling property at or where you've listed property at, okay? So this is this was pretty much it. I, does anybody have any questions? I know it's not the most exciting, but. <laughs> the, uh, the letters that you've shown, um, mm -hmm. are, are the samples at Lisa? Yeah. Do you have those? Yeah, I still have those. And we could stay to be updated, obviously. I would change. Here's what I would do, rip off and duplicate. I do it all the time, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> what I would do is, <laughs> I would look at break and broker some of the letters in there, right? Because the templates yeah. are in there. I would pull from this. I would take chat GPT. Yeah. 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 
Time saver. Time saver. If I go through it, are you guys using it? It's yeah. just a, yeah. a great time saver. And I would say, right, you know, if you're targeting, write a letter to an out of state homeowner that owns a property in California that doesn't know the trends in today's environment mm -hmm. and real estate. You know, it, the, we'll put something together and then make it your own and then upload it. And that, I mean, but yeah, yes. It gives you a, a, a comment script. Oh, yeah. You know, a script for, you know, a star list and blah, blah, blah. And it was like, have you guys really dived into chat GPT yeah. though? Once yeah. it gives you that script yeah. like, and said, great, now now condense it into two paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Great, now make it a text message. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You, you know, you can yeah. really, really keep going on the one um sorry using all the apps up there. You can keep going on all the um on all the different uh topics with it yeah. because there's so many that are on there, you know what I mean? But um you can really have them continually condense it and really get into it. So I highly recommend, I know it's not for everybody. Some people like won't use it at all. They don't want any part of it. I'm like, oh, I, I'm like, I think it's helpful. Um, if anything, it can give you some ideas. Yeah. You guys could put in there, you know, a new agent, you know, looking to generate leads in 12 different easy steps or what's a good 12. I had somebody call me earlier on the way here that said, I'm looking for a 12 touch campaign. And so are you looking for it with for your farm? Are you looking for it with your past clients? And they said, no, I'm for my farm. I want to know, I, I, I go, well, we can all sit here and say, well, you should do market updates and you can do this and that. But, you know, I said, go on chat GPT. I just know that it, if you said, I'm a realtor and I want to create a 12 touch marketing strategy to reach a farm area that nobody knows me in so that I become the, you know, area expert, it's going to line it out for that person. Yes. And then you could just kind of make it your own. Where you find the marketing pieces or where you can create them, there's so many different sources you've got. Break the broker, I, I always say it's free. I wouldn't utilize them for the postcards, but Core Fact, I, I preach Core Fact in here a lot. I love Core Fact. You love it. Good. Yeah. Because I feel that if you're going to send something out, at least have a way of tracking it. So with, can I ask you when you get the results and or you send your postcard out, do you have yours set up for it to uh, text camp? Notify you via text or email. Email. It does email. email. Yeah. Okay. It, it tells you email. And I just discovered two weeks not too long ago by messing with it uh, that you know on, after you set up the postcard, you actually set it up to where like it keeps reaching out to those people every month. So now I get every month they're like, okay, you know there was a, there was a change on your market. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then it tells me although people already went in there, how many people went back in there to see what the changes were. Uh -huh. And surprisingly, I'm also getting like I did, I, I closed this session three, three months ago, I'm still getting notified like, oh, a new uh, homeowner uh, scanned the barcode. Okay. So people are keeping them. And they mail it yeah. for you? Is this a they do mail it for you, do everything for that. Yeah. I can teach you if you like that. So yeah. Really, uh, so it's, it's the best, for me it's the best. Okay, perfect. For those pricing, but it's the best. It's, it yeah. is, yeah. So Core Fact, for those of you who don't know, I can send you a referral. Mm -hmm. It's a third party vendor that we refer. You get 10% off your first order. And then every month they send some type of little, like for Halloween, they probably do like a 5% off or something like that. Uh, minimum 50 postcard order, which I love because then you don't feel tight. There's no monthly fees, so you don't have to do any of that. All the templates are on there. They have postcards, door hangers, there's thousands of them. It's very simple and it's always on trend. It will let you know what the, the hot topics are. And then on the, on the, on the postcard itself, um, it has a, uh, What's my homework or something yeah. like, like kind of yeah. like a QR code? Find the value of your home. Find yeah. the value of your home. And what happens is, me as a consumer or a homeowner would receive it, and I can look at it, and it looks like it's his website, right? Mm -hmm. But when I go to enter the key code, that's what it looks like. His website, like he created this website, and I can enter it in, put in my address based off that it's unique to my address, so it knows automatically. Mm -hmm. It would say, oh, uh, seven oh six Encanto, your home value, and it's kind of like a CMA. So it notifies him immediately that I've gone into the system. If anything, it's gonna give him my address and then he could do one of two things. You can either stalk me and call me, <laughs> right? And find out on the address yeah. or put a nice little maybe up, uh, updated CMA package together and just leave a little note by the door. So that, that's always like something that I think is really important. Right. Like it's a way to track it, but then you have the feedback. So if you've sent out, I'm just curious, how many postcards did you send out? Uh, I usually send 250 uh, within, you know, for the property sold. Okay. Yeah. And then how, but on the last one, do you know how many? Oh, the have? last one, man, it was incredible. I had like, like almost 50 people. That's huge. Yeah, yeah, it was that's really huge. That's huge. Your contact and then, it, like you said, so it's in the back end, and then he can see every time they go in, 
they might continually go in yeah. just it actually see. gives them a grade for example like these are just winning one time they just say you know this is a yeah. great like one star but at least i kept going back in there checking and checking and checking mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. so you guys said this is the hot one out of all these things i have she's the one that's you know really digging yeah. into yeah and that yeah, yeah. Uh, what is it feedback in? Where are you checking? Uh, no, so, so it, gives, it, it gives them a grade of, of how much they log it into to check the value of the home and to check on the website. Yeah, they do a lot. They do a lot of that yeah. wow. stuff for you. Yeah. Uh, with postage, out the door, small size postage, that's a great thing. Yeah. 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 With postage, out the door, small size postcard, I think averages about, with and they do it all, about 70 cents a postcard. Mm -hmm. I mean, it depends on if you, those are the little ones, right? But you can get the bigger jumbo ones and the big, big yeah. postcards too. Because I'm not. Again, it's not the end all be all with perfect. I just saying in, if you can do any type, if you're going to send any type of mailing out, whether it's a letter or a postcard or anything like that, just have some type of way to track it or know where they're driving them to because it's so huge to know that you yeah. sent 250 and got 15. That's a oh, huge yeah. percentage on that. Yeah, and now that becomes to me that that lady or, or gentleman that keeps going back into the system, mm -hmm. to me that's like, hey, already a CMA at the door, and then maybe it's a, another like little note that just says, hey, would you like to have a cup of coffee and talk about your home's value and, you know, selling your exactly. property or just, just stay on them. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. That's huge. There's a template and everything, so you just go in and yeah. 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 yeah, and they always tell you what's trending on there as well. They'll let you know, like, hey, no, because it's yeah, a You don't spend a lot of time creating the postcard, too. You just, I like this one, I like this yeah. one, just upload the picture, the yeah. property information, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah. The other uh, trick to these that I like is uh, that uh, on the barcode, it just tells you click it to find out about your home. It doesn't say call me, it doesn't say email me. So a lot of people, like, the first thing is like, oh man, if I call him, he's gonna start bugging me. Yeah. But it says scan the code, you find out about your home, they scan it, and they go to a website, they go, oh, they click on it, and it gives them the value. Uh -huh. So they're like, oh, I got it. You know, So they don't feel like I just gave them information, I'm gonna be bugging the heck out of me. Yeah. yeah, because it's so, it's, yeah. it's a generic website, generic and people website. are more apt to go into more a generic website. website than they would be to your personal yeah. website. Because they know we're trying, right? Anytime it gets your personal, it's like, oh, yeah, it, 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 it goes to the homeowner. So, you know, homeowner's out of state, which out of those 15, like a couple of them were out of state, yeah. it actually goes to their home. Mm -hmm. So, we're, we're at that EDDM, mm -hmm. and, you know, the response is really, really low. You do a lot more. But you get a lot of this too. You just touched on something that was really huge there because you mentioned the out of state. So if you have a database and you have people that are all over the place, it's hard to do market updates, right? You might have clients that are in Elsinore, you have clients that maybe are in Orange County, what have you. That's a great tool to upload because you can take your, it will do your market update based off their property address. So that is a reason. Maybe you do it every quarter. Maybe it's not something you do every month, but you can definitely let your sphere of influence or your past clients, friends, family, know what their home is worth and they can live anywhere so it's not so um segmented just to a you know the, the canyon lake area or lake elsinore you can utilize it for um so, your so send, use it to send uh, your your database your best clients an actual postcard and now that postcard itself that website is not sending them stuff mm -hmm. every, even every month hey what was the change on your market what was the change on your market almost things that you're the one that's keeps sending his emails yeah. every month. And it's all through core traffic. Right? So it's all through, yeah, mm -hmm. for free. So basically, for free. Now that, that, that all that monthly stuff is free. So it's added to the fee of the postcard itself. Wow, I'm using it. Yeah, yeah. 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 no, I can send you guys a, not, not a problem. Just, just, it, just send me an email or text me and okay. say core fact. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll, I'll um, refer you. I'd rather get, get, get you guys a little bit of savings there. Yeah. I think it gets some good ideas. At the bottom line of today's class when we were talking about is right now, all the office meetings that I do, I, I don't care if it's a Remax, like my KWs, my real new one groups, they're all reasons to reach out, double down on the database, back to the basic. Like it is, you, we have to work so much harder now, but smarter, right? Mm -hmm. Smarter, not harder, I guess I should be saying, because we do have to do a little bit of everything social media postcards like it all it's all it all ties in now but the one number one thing everybody can agree on is your sphere and your database it's it's everything right now it's where most of your business can, the people are going to talk to you office meeting this morning office manager does a fair amount of business out in the riverside area and he missed out on a listing um pilot bought a couple of homes from him in the past bought sold bought sold and he felt that his home bought, which is an email campaign that goes out, he'll kind of let you know what your home are, and that his touches every now via email were enough. He thought he was nurturing because the email campaigns and the drips were going out and that that was just good enough. And the guy ended up, the pilot ended up listing his home with somebody else. 
And I thought to myself right there, I go, if you would have done equity estimates with this guy, mm -hmm. if you would have just handed him something a little bit more, you know, and so I shared with them the equity estimate program. You know, we have the annual update, the same thing we do with anybody, but don't don't forget your people because sometimes even though you might, you know, first of all, I send text messages, not everybody reads my text messages, right? They are, it's at least a little time. <laughs> but, it, but there's others that will, you know, everybody's different, but I already read an email. You get a 9% open ratio on emails. If you get anything over that, that's great. But one thing we do open is our mail. You know, so if you can do something outside the box, I would do some type of equity estimate or update and let these people know, hey, you have equity in your home. Here's here's a copy of your grant deed. Here's some comps in the area. Mail that out to them. If you don't hear from them in a few days, send them a text or give them a call. Hey, I sent you that package. Just want to make sure you got it. Had some, comp, had some comps let you know about the equity in your home. Also have the grant deed you can hold on to. Most of the time, my agents, when they send that out, they do get feedback because they the, their past clients see that that grant deed in there. They go, well, this is important. Arlen sent me this. Is I I must need this for something. Yeah. It's not to scare them, right? It's just like, no. oh no, I'm glad you called. I just wanted to let, let you know you have equity in your home, and I just like hey, check in with you, see how things are going. Gosh, I can't believe you lived there for two years already. How, you know, just a reason. It's just a reason, but. He, he knew it today. He, you know, he's preaching to his agents all the time about doing it. And he goes, I missed the boat because I thought I was nurturing my past clients better. And he goes, and I could have done a better job. So I just want to stress that with you moving forward. Maybe you don't do it 100% right now, but try it, especially with 2024 coming in. It's our, right now, you get all your systems in place. It's, we're not as crazy busy, right? So make sure your CRMs are up to Go through your database. If you're missing emails, if you're missing phone numbers, send them to me. Send me your database. I will run it through my system and see what I can plug in for you. Okay, I can get you the missing the missing information. That's going to be huge. Your database is everything. So if you're missing phone numbers, you're missing emails, names. You know, I need an address. Give me an address. But I can help you guys with that. So I just want to I want to put that out there. Any way that I can help you help your business, I know it's going to help my business, especially in 2024. I want you guys to succeed. Yeah, you know, I want you to be the 10 percenters in this business. Yeah. Okay. Woo! Yeah. But it's my pet talk. <laughs> 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 you know, I do. I do. I really want every. I just. I just want everybody to really be the best that they can be at this. And I know, and it's a lot. There's a lot that comes at you, and it's just going through and deciding what works for you. You know, if door knocking is not your thing, then maybe phone calls it. Phone calls isn't it, and maybe it's the postcard. You but gotta find something that works for you. Social media, we know it's. So it's free most of the time, right? Besides the ads that you run. Do you do a lot of social media ads? No. No. Why not? I don't like to do it for a camera. You and me both, but they push you to do it. Yeah, yeah. Do just, it. Do it. No, just do it. Do it. Just 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 do I do. It's just so different. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, yeah. You know, I was used to emails. Yeah. So now it's different. It's a whole different to this. It's like yeah. Completely different. Oh yeah. It's a completely yeah. different world. I just I would. If, are you on Instagram? Or yes. Facebook? Okay. So try maybe set us up. You know, like one of our reps right now, him and another realtor in the year. He, he's, he works out of Temecula area. Super proud of them. They're doing a thirty day video challenge. Mm -hmm. Both of them hate videos, but they they're super knowledgeable. It's been in the business world, like they know what they're talking about, but they're not talking to the right audience, right? Mm -hmm. So they challenged each other and they've been going, they're on day three. And I'm not saying post a video a day, but if you maybe challenge yourself and say, you know what, I don't do any, so I'm gonna try it for at least one a week or one every other week. And if you put it in your marketing plan and say, I'm gonna post three times on a story, my feed, what may it be, a little bit about family, a little bit friends, a little bit about real estate, sprinkle it all in there, and then maybe do a little community update or something like that. Just, if you have it, you've written it out, it's huge, because you don't wanna be that secret agent. People, they do go on Instagram. They go, I mean, how many of you guys, when you are looking for something, you go to Yelp or Instagram or, right? I go, I go look for something, yeah, right? We look for reviews on it before we really go. If I'm gonna go stay somewhere, that's what I'm doing, you know? And I, I, I'm dating myself because I know I'm in my 50s, but 
the younger generations are that's their Google is Instagram and TikTok is their news and you know so unfortunately it's part of our business today yeah, and if you don't do it well like find somebody yeah. that does it does it for you yeah. you know I, I know my strengths I know my weaknesses that's that's one of them so I have somebody that helps me with it and it keeps me on track you know it's a cost of me doing business but I that's that's I got to do it and I can you guys gotta look at it this way too and I know now I'm going on the social media tangent but you know, sending out 400 postcards or 250 postcards and doing one one or two videos, you're mm-hmm. going to reach how many more people? Correct. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I had one video that had 4,000 views. I was like, I can't get to 4,000 realtors in a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or a month. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, it's, that's on my soapbox. I'm going to be done. Does anyone <laughs> have any questions? Or any, you want me to send you the core fact clean? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. I'm going to need some more training on your website, too. Okay. Because it's very detailed. Okay. Um, on the title pro or okay i like it but i don't know how to navigate okay it. well and there's no value in it and i and, and we oh, it Vaughn, can you help me walk me through yeah that? no and that's what i'm saying it, it and i apologize because i know we did that one class so i am a big believer if you need more help with the lawyers agent one if you need more help with dynamic farm or title pro i would be more than happy to sit down with you one-on-one and go through that mm-hmm. there is no value in that for you if you don't know how to navigate it through there you know I, I, I utilize it for data. Like uh-huh. Yeah. How would, I, how would I find equity in the non owner occupies in my farm? I need to figure out my farms and then strategically yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Di- that's what's nice yeah. about Dynamic. Because Dynamic does all that for you. Because okay. Dynamic will say, here's my farm. I'll tell you how many are empty. I have the premium thing and I have the app. I love the app. Yeah. I don't know how to use the website. Yet. Okay. And that's the Title Pro. And that, what I love about Title Pro, um, and I know Manny uses it too, but that is just. I can't stress enough on the tax side of it mm-hmm. because you can put in, especially you guys that are showing buyers, you can put in the, the purchase price and it's going to give you the taxes based off that new purchase price. No rules and everything. Yep. It's a difference. It's so like a street. A yeah. Mm-hmm. When yeah. you're running payments for them, it's a game changer. It's a huge game changer. It can make a big difference. Every, every property is assessed differently. Yeah. You know, you could be, across, like you said, across the street and they have it and you don't. So I, that's one thing you definitely need to know on that system. I am more than happy to set up a time and we can like maybe more time on the go. And then just Perfect. We are live? Not yet. <laughs> That's why my fist is closed. Although this, the red light is on, so just in case. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay. So a little sneak peek if yeah. the light is red. Which one? Uh, this one's red right now.